All right. So today I want to talk to you about rejection becoming a choice and not something that you need to embrace. Rejection is a choice and it's not something that you need to embrace. And we're going to go over some scripture. Um, we're going to start with Job. What you decide on will be done. And light will shine on your ways. You know, Job was very wise. And he stood strong in his faith with God. And that's what I love so much about reading the book of Job because it just shows how much he's gone through and yet he's still in, he still stood firm on his foundation. He stood firm on what he believed in. And that is phenomenal faith. And that is exactly what we need to do when we are going through the process of receiving rejection or when we go into the process of receiving our opposition or when we're in a place that it doesn't feel as if this is where we should be. You know, it is always where we're going to be because there are lessons to be learned. There are, there are, are, are character to be built. We have so much to learn and we're never going to master it all in this lifetime. So I'm okay with that. And we should all be okay with that, but we should always be with our hearts ready and willing to learn on what the Lord wants us to, um, to, to equip us with what he wants us, what lessons we should be taking in. And so rejection is always a hard thing. It puts us in hard ground and it's almost like, um, you know, as human nature, you know, we're always looking to see, like, we always want them people to embrace our gift, embrace what God has given us, embrace how we move in it. And a lot of times, because of the lack of understanding, because they have lack of understanding, they do not uh, embrace what the Lord has given us, embrace the gifting and how we move in it. So rejection can come in many different forms, whether it's as simple as a, you know, touch on the shoulder, you know, thank you for, you know, for what you're doing, but we kind of just don't do that here. Whatever the case However, the way they want to serve the cup is what we need to be careful on because it's up to us whether we drink it or not. If it is a hot day and I'm offered a hot cup of water, it's my choice to whether drink it if I'm going to drink it or not. And so I just want to speak to those who have fallen into a place of rejection. It is our choice if we choose to drink out of the cup of rejection or not. We don't have to. I try and cut, tuck my ears in because I'm not sure why they're out. We don't have to embrace that cup. We can choose to say, okay, they don't they don't accept it. They don't want to, they don't want to take, you know, the gifts or whatever from me. It's fine. But you got to be like Jesus. Jesus was rejected from his own city. He was rejected time and time again. He never ever stayed in a place where the spirit of rejection will dominate his life. The spirit of rejection should not dominate your life. It should not dictate your destiny and it should not hold you back from it either. If that is something you're enduring in this hour, then I'm going to speak to your rejection today and I'm going to silence that voice because we are called for the greater works. We are called for the greater good. We are called for good news and not bad news. And if rejection keeps spewing out bad news of your life, then we're going to cancel that out today. And we're going to, we're going to start off our day with just declaring Job 22, 28 over our life. What I decide will be done and the light will shine in all my ways. What I decide today, it will be done and the light of the glory of God will shine on all my ways. Come on, somebody needs to declare it. Declare it with me. What I decide, what I decide in my life, will have light shining in all its ways. Job 22, 28. This might need, be, need to be something you need to put on your mirror. What I decide will be done, and the light will shine in all my ways. 
We got to declare these good news over our life when you are walking surrounded by rejection because we do not have time to give the enemy a foothold, not even a finger in our life to hold us back from from the destiny that God has placed over our life. We have a purpose. We have a call. We don't have time for words or voices that are not from my father to speak into our life. We have to fulfill the glory of God here on earth in our lifetime. Somebody declare it today. I, what I decide will be done. And the light of my father will guide my path. Amen. So Isaiah 49, Isaiah 49 says the Lord's servant was commissioned. Today, my dear beloveds, you are on a mission of your commissioning. I don't care what mountain you are on, whether it is the marketplace, whether it's religion, whether it's the teacher, as I'm happy to hear that you're on a mountain. Jesus, that's the first breakthrough. It's finding my people sitting on the mountain of influence that God has given them. Thank you, God, hallelujah, for leading your people into the, into the, the arena, into your influence mountain and making an impact. That's your first goal. So if you're on your mountain and, and you're finding voices of rejection, we're about to cancel that today because your first accomplishment was already set in place. You were saved, sanctified, delivered, and set free by the glory of Jesus Christ. Your second accomplishment was that you found your influence on the mountain that you were called to. Hallelujah. Praise God that you are there. And the third thing we're about to do is cancel out all surroundings that do not need to be around you. All those voices, we're going to call, we're going to cancel them out. We're going to proclaim the voice of the Lord over you today. Why? Because it is what the Lord wants. It's what God is doing. It's what it's it's his will for your life, for you to uh, to uh, to reach the tip of that mountain, for you to gain your hind feet, for you to have a grip on that mountain. Nothing, nothing can take you off that mountain unless you let them to. So let's let's declare it again. Let's declare Job twenty two twenty eight. What I decide today, it will be done, and the light will shine my path in the way I should go. Come on, what I decide today will be done. Come on, you got to declare what I decide today will be done. And if I decide to drink from the cup of rejection, that is from the that is exactly where your light will be coming from, from that rejection. And sometimes, look at this, the angel, it says, Satan came as the angel of light. Was it good? No. The angel of light that Satan came in was not good, which means you can project a light that's not good. Hello, can I can I get a can I get a hallelujah? Somebody said revelation on here on this. You can project light that is not good. So I don't I, us as a body, we don't need to project bad light. We need to project good light. So the choice that you make today will be the very choice of light you will project. Amen? And Jesus was the one true light. We don't need light that projects false identity. We don't need light that projects false motivation. We need a light that projects the truth and delivers the truth and identity and delivers the truth in what you're projecting, which would be the good news. Isaiah 49, because you are a commissioned servant. And here's my thing. I thank you, Lord, that we're no longer just a servant, but we're a sonship. We are in a relationship. We're in a covenant with the Lord. It changes everything. It changes everything. When I have an unconditional relationship with my father, that means right now, right here, he's here. He's here. He's here with me. He's here with you. He's here with everyone who's watching. He is with you. Father said he will never forsaken. If we have felt the spirit of forsakenness, right now we're going to command that thing to leave. Because that's a lie that came from hell. You are not forsaken. You are not forsaken. So, 49, Isaiah 49 says, listen to me, all you in a distant land. Has anybody felt distant lately? 
Have you been feeling distant from the Lord? Have you been feeling distant from his presence? Well, he's speaking. He says, pay attention. You who are far away. Oh, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm speaking to somebody. The Lord called me before my birth. I'm going I'm to decree this. The Lord has called you before your birth. Excuse me. You have been called. You have been chosen before you were even conceived. Hello. Somebody give God praise right where they are. You have been called and you have been chosen before your parents even thought about conception. It says, from within the womb, he called me by name. Your name was chosen before you were conceived. He spoke it forward. Iris, Anna, Maddie, Lisa. I'm going to call. He called it. God called it. He called you by name. Your name was not an accident. It was your identity. It was who you were going to become. And that is exactly what he did. I'm going to call it forth for what it is. I'm going to call forth Lisa. I'm going to call forth Iris. I'm going to call forth me and Anna. I'm going to call forth me and Madam. Why? Because these, this was your identity before the, your parents even said, we're going to get together. Oh, they thought they had an idea. That idea was inspired by God. And people were like, well, what if they did it in sin? I, listen, I'm not trying to get to the root of something right now. I'm trying to get to the purpose of it. I'm trying to get to the purpose of it. The Bible says that things that were done in bad will, will be turned around for its good. So whatever was created in the womb from bad, he turned it around for its good. You are good. God said that when he created you, he created with the intentions of his goodness. It says, he made my words of judgment as a sharp as a sword. Did you hear me? He made my words. What are your words? Sharp as a sword. Your words are as sharp as a sword and it can cut through any veil that comes to blind you. Any hindrance that comes to detain you. Any type of malice. Your words are sharp as a sword and it can pierce through. You need to believe this for yourself. When God created you in the womb, and he places identity and purpose in you. He said, your words will be as sharp as a sword. So what you decree, what you speak will do two things. It will create it for good or it will create bad. But it was your choice to create it. So make the right choice in your life. Speak the right choices in your life because you are using a sword. You are using a very sharp sword that's going to change things for you. It's going to change your family. He has hidden in me. He has hidden me in the shadow of his hand. Uh, excuse me? What does that mean? Everybody knows that when Peter began to walk in the miraculous, his shadow healed. Come on now. Somebody better receive this. If you are in a need of healing emotionally, mentally, if you have strayed away from the Lord, the Lord says, I placed my shadow on you and I've kept you. I needed to keep you hidden. If this was you, this is the shadow. God puts his shadow on you and he keeps you hidden. And out of his shadow, you're receiving. You're receiving. You know what he does for those who are running from him? He shadows them. He shadows them. He shadows them. And every time the shadow, when they turn to the shadow, they remember God. When they turn to the shadow, they remember his goodness. When they turn to the shadow, somebody needs to believe this for their family that if you have children, who are running from God, that God will shadow them. You need to pray, God, shadow my children, shadow my family, so that every time they turn to the shadow, they find you. Every time they turn to the shadow, they see you. Every time they turn to the shadow, they encounter you. You have to start to prophesy. I'm feeling this all over my bones right now. You got to decree, decree and declare a, pro, a prophetic word. God, shadow my family. I don't know, but I'm feeling this for my own. I am like a sharp arrow in his quiver. Hello. You are a sharp arrow in God's quiver. He, he said to me, you are my servant. 
and you will bring me glory. Oh my Lord, I don't know if I if I if if I run, I'm gonna leave you guys. <laughs> he said, he said, you are a servant. You are my servant. And you will bring me glory. This is a beautiful declaration for your life right now. You will rise up in the morning. Not only will you say you, what you what I decide will be done, and let the light shine my way today. But now you're going to declare, decree, and declare that not only was I chosen from the womb. He specifically named me for my purpose. My words are as sharp as a sword, and I am hidden in the shadow of his hand. I am the arrow to his quiver. He sent me forth, and I am his servant that I am called to bring him glory. My work might seem useless. Oh, somebody's going to receive this today. I might need to take these off for a minute. It says, my words sometimes seems useless when rejection shows up, makes me feel useless. When rejection shows up, it makes me feel useless. When abandonment shows up, it makes me feel useless. When, when loneliness shows up, it makes me feel useless. When everything that is not of my father shows up in front of me to detain me, to hold me back, to hinder the walk, to hinder my purpose, to shut the voice of the chosen call over my life, it makes me feel useless. It makes me feel like what I'm about to say doesn't matter. It makes me feel like when I use my gift, it doesn't matter. But it says, I replied, but my work seems useless. I've spent my strength for nothing and to no purpose. Have you felt this way in your life where you felt that what you were doing for God was useless and how you spent your strength had no purpose in it? Have you felt like this? Because this is the voice right here that I'm coming to break out. This is the voice that I'm coming to pull out of your mind, out of your heart, that you have been sitting there and pondering and says, what does it matter for me to ever do anything good for the Lord because everything I do is useless and anything I ever enter into has no purpose. It has no substance. And that's a lie right there from hell. And yet it says, I'm, and then yet I leave all this in the hands of my father. I leave the voices that condemn me in the hands of my father. I leave the voices that come to hinder my purpose in the hands of my father. I leave everything that has delayed me in the hands of my father. Hello, give God some praise because when you have the strength to say, today I make a choice to leave the voice of rejection in the hands of my father, you've made a choice to put a light in your path to do what is right, to stand for the purpose and the call of what the Lord has commissioned to. You, you made a choice to listen to the voice of the Father. And it said, I will trust God for my reward. He made a choice in the midst of that chaos. He made a choice. You see how he made a choice? It says, and now the Lord speaks. Now God speaks. And then he says, the one who I formed, the one who formed me in my mother's womb to be his servant, who commissioned me to bring the nation back to him. The Lord has honored me. My God has given me strength. And then he says, you will do more than restore my people back to me. I will make you a light to a nation and you will bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my Lord. God is so good at redeeming us from our own pit. God is so good at redeeming us from our own hell. Because a lot of times we make choices that puts us in a pit or brings us back to hell brings us back to the old nature. And when God says, I said, I created something good, he meant it. And when God says that I've given you a new creation in you, he meant it. And what we need to do is start declaring the words of our father over us and mean it. And mean it. Rise up in the morning and let that be your first morning bread. Not your phone, not the Facebook. My first morning bread has to be Father, today, I declare that as I rise, that I will make a choice that you will be the light in my path. Father, I declare 
that today, that my emotions, my will, and my mind will be submitted onto your spirit. Father, lead me. Make it every day. And you will see your life change radically. Renewing the mind needs to be a process of being serious about being made new. You have to be persistent in this walk. You have to be persistent in what you want from God because God was persistent in chasing you. Then why are you not persistent in chasing what God has placed in you? These are questions we have to ask. What's keeping me from receiving the fullness of God? God, break off the things in me. Break off the things in me that hinder this process in you. He says that you will do more than just restore my people and bring them back to me, but you will be a light to a nation. You'll be a light to Gentiles. You'll bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. And the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel says to the one who is despised and rejected. I was getting somewhere. He's talking to the one who was despised and rejected. He's, this was a moment in Isaiah's life that God came in and said, no, you will not live according to the despising or the rejection of people. You will live according to what I have said that you will live. You will live according to what I've spoken over you. You are not to die in rejection or being despised. You will live according to my words and what I have said. He said, I'm speaking to you. The Lord, the Redeemer. The Holy One of Israel says to the one who has been despised and rejected by the people, to the one who was the servant of the rulers, kings will stand at attention when you pass by. Come on, somebody declare this over yourself today. Kings will stand at attention when they see you as you pass them by. Prince will also bow low because of the Lord, the faithful one, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. He said, because you were the least, because you were the last, you will be first in everything in this season. You already had your choice of rejection. You already had your cups after cups of despising. You've already lived this life and today I'm coming to speak to your life and remind you of what I've called you to do. Remind you of the call that I placed in you and remind you of the purpose that I put in you to remind you that I'm God on the throne and I'm unshakable and unmovable. Can no one move me? So when I say something, I mean what I say. And when I say what I mean, it will come to pass. Because my voice, my word cannot come back to me void. And I'm speaking to many today. The spirit of rejection is a choice. It is a matter of choice. The spirit of, of being despised, it's a matter of choice. I will choose to drink if I, if I want to. I will choose to embrace it if I want to. I don't have to. And so this is a season where you have to make a choice of saying, I'm not going to drink from this cup. I'm not going to embrace that rejection. I'm not going to endure it anymore because it's, it's hindered my walk enough. And this season, if I'm already called and I'm already been called, if I've already am sitting on the mountain that God has already placed me on and I'm already influencing people who will never give you credit <laughs> that you've been an influence in their life. Can, can I, can I get an amen on that? Listen, I, 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 I've been awakened by the Holy spirit where I have influenced lives that will never give me credit for it. And I'm okay with that. You know why? Because I refuse to drink from the cup of rejection. I, re I refuse to drink from the cup of being despised. I refused. I refuse to hear the voice that says, it's my influence is based on likes, shares, and comments. No, my influence is not based on likes, shares, and comments. My influence is based on the word of God and what God has placed in me alone. That's it. 
And when you make that decision in your life to say, my influence is based on my father and not on man, you will stop looking for man to please you. You will stop pleasing man and you will live out the fullness of God and you will change a nation. You will change cities. You will be a light in many paths. We just got to make sure that we're projecting the right light. That is a light full of truth, honesty, integrity, that it has love, that it has everything that Jesus is has to come out of that light. And if, and if you have been experiencing this voice of, of rejection, of this voice that despises you, people have been saying they despise you or, they, or you know what, I don't, I don't accept you, then it's okay. I've been already accepted. <laughs> you can't kick me out of the body. You can't decapitate my, the hand. You can't do anything because it's all been placed in my father's hands. You see, people can't do anything unless you allow them to do it to you. So if you, and remember, we're not fighting, we're not fighting flesh and blood. We are fighting principalities of the air, principalities of the air. We are fighting roots. We are fighting strongholds. We are fighting things that are detaining those people as well. So just have compassion for those that are operating in that format in your life and, and take it as a character building. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, that they're helping me build my character. I'm thanking you, Jesus, that they're the thorn on my side that's making me come up higher. I'm thanking you, Jesus, that they're the ones that you're using for the standards to be to be on another level this season. I'm thanking you, Jesus, because you're using them for your glory. I'm thanking you, Jesus, that, and you just thank him. Because I have found that an ingrateful heart or a spirit of ingratitude will, will keep you in a place where you will never see your freedom. And we cannot be people of ingratitude because ingratitude will bring you to rebellion and rebellion will turn you from God. Period. <laughs> End of story. If you are going to be in a place of ingratitude and then you're going to fall into rebellion... You're going to turn from God and you're going to do your own thing. Listen, he didn't place you on that mountain so you could do your own thing. He placed you on that mountain so you could continue to bring in glory. Don't compromise for no one. So, you know, Isaiah was going through this and he said, and, and who else too, Job? We just said that we declared it today with Job. Job said, you know, he went through all these trials and tribulations. I mean, he had people, his whole family was gone pretty much. His friends were like, just tell them, just curse him, just turn from God. And Job, uh, and Job was like, no, mm -mm, I don't feel that. I don't feel that. And what did, what did God do to Job? He put his, he, 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 every, every place where Job received a thorn on his side, God placed his glory. It's nothing more beautiful than God taking those bad things in your life and bringing forth the goodness. There's nothing more beautiful than that. I mean, it is so good when you find your place in, in a place of where everything is going bad. I mean, God turns it around for his goodness. And, you, you know, just the waiting process might be might be a little uh, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of weight on you. Just all of that. It didn't even matter. What it mattered was the outcome of what God had for you. So re the rejection and being despised and being not embraced for the gifts that God has placed over your life. It's not a bad thing. It's a choice thing. You got to choose what you're going to do in your life this season. I choose to embrace the goodness of God. I choose to embrace his call. I choose to believe God's word over my life and I will not settle for that voice. So I'm just going to decree this. So Father, I just decree your voice over the lives of the people who are listening. I just decree the voice of the Lord that echoes in our sea where there's raging storms, where there's all these things are coming up and there seems to be like tornadoes everywhere. And God, I just declare your voice in it. I declare that your glory, the thunders of your glory, God, 
will prevail in this season. That you are the Lord of thunders and even over the mighty seas. That your voice, that your voice, Lord, splits the mighty cedars, every root, every tree, every root, God, that even tries to grow up and spring up after we've deaded it. God, that you are the one that strikes it. And your, your voice will shatter the cedars of, Lib of Lebanon, God. Any area in our life, God, that is found trying to rise up. Any seed, God, that has not been deaded, that, that is not of you, God. We just, we just place your glory right now. That that seed will turn around for good. That your voice will strike with bolts of lightning in our life, God. That we would hear your voice like never before. That the voice of the Lord will make the barren wilderness quake every ounce of our being, God, that has been dry and weary places that have resubmitted itself to, to, to just our flesh. God, right now, we just say your voice, your voice makes the barren wilderness quake. It shakes the dry areas. And as you shake the dry areas, God, that, that there will be rivers streaming forth again. That your voice, Lord, twists even the mighty oaks and it strips the forest bare, God. It will do the same for us in our life. That you will twist and that you will strip things that have made us bare, God. And it will bear fruit, God. You will prune off so that we can bear greater fruit. And that your temple, in your temple, in our temple, in our temple, we shout glory. For the Lord rules over waters, and it would flood us from our minds, in our hearts, in our soul, in our womb, God. Let your waters flood our soul, that your voice speaks through like fire, that in the midst of our raging, consuming fire, God, in our times of fiery trials or in our times that we are being consumed by you, that it was your voice that spring forth the loudest. It was the voice of the Most High that is resounding. I'm just going to declare a resounding, that we're going to resound the voice of the Lord over your life, that the sound that was of, not of him, I'm sending forth the resound, the very sound you heard from the beginning, you said yes to Jesus. We're going to send out a resounding over your life, that he is the Lord, of, he is the voice, the Lord over your life. So let the sound of the voice of the Lord resound again in your life. The voice of the Lord is powerful. It's majestic. It is, um, it's just royal. It is love. It is identity. It is truth. The voice of the Lord will shatter any bullying, any brutal words that were spoken. Voice, 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 voice. I keep hearing the word voice, 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 voice. Voices, voices, voices. It's almost like someone standing in the midst of a lot of voices and they're telling you what to do, where to go, what you shouldn't do, how you should do it. And these voices are dictating you. And so right now I silence those voices. I say silence. Grab a hold of your insanity. Silence them. Say, stop. I need to hear from God. You have to make the choice. I'm speaking to somebody. There's a lot of people around you speaking, 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 speaking. It has brought you to a place of insanity. You can't even think for yourself. And I'm telling you, God is saying, tell the voices to stop. I need to hear from God. It has been weighing you down. You have been feeling a heaviness. The spirit of weariness has come upon you. You've even been feeling sick. You weren't even feeling any symptoms. Now you're feeling multiple symptoms. You can't even get off the bed. I'm speaking to somebody. God is showing me a picture. You're in the middle of a 360 circle where voices have been dictating your life. You couldn't even speak for yourself. God is saying, I need you to open your mouth and use the sword to say, stop. I need to hear from God. 
I need a piece of sanity to know what I'm doing this season. I need to take back my life. I need to live my purpose. I need to walk my destiny. Oh, we just declare a fresh wind over your life, a fresh breath of God over your life. We just declare the rule of God over you right now. And that wind that it will just blow off every word every voice, every dictation. My gosh, you have had a dictator in your life. He needs, I'm just saying this, it could be many dictators. It's what you've allowed to dictate your call right now. You need to tell the dictator, you do not dictate my life. God dictates my life. It says that if we seek the kingdom first, everything else would follow. And that means your family, that means your children, that means everything else that's connected to your line will follow. But I got to have God first. God first. God first. There's been a spirit of heaviness on you. My God, you can't even get off the bed. You almost feel like you don't want to get off the bed. You've almost kind of submitted to this. So right now, I just prophesy over you that that spirit of heaviness right now, get out. That the voice of the Lord supersedes everything. There will be strength again. There will be energy again. You are not sick. You are been made whole. You are not insane. You have sanity. You have not, you are not weak. You are strong and you have not died but you are to live. So I just declare that over you right now. I'm not sure who that word was for, but the Lord has revealed it. And I am declaring it forth that you will receive a new wind from God, from your womb to push you forward and to another level of where you should have been, but didn't go. But now you will be. Did you just see what I just did? Where you should have been, you didn't go. You will now be. I'm, I'm declaring that. I just did a 360. You should have been. You didn't go. But now you are. In Jesus' mighty name. Because when Jesus came and died on the cross, he didn't come for you to have to bear all this. He called that when it would happen, that you would overcome all this. That you would be above a conqueror. What's above a conqueror? I mean, can you even, I mean, look that up. What's above a, con a conqueror? You are above. And so that, therefore, when these trials and tribulations come, what did I say about the hand? The hand of God, the hand of God, the hand of God. Remember, the hand of God. This is what you're going to be visioning, the hand of God, the hand of God. In my shadow, I will find the hand of God. In my shadow, I will find the will of God. In my shadow. I will find the purpose of God. If that is going to be the constant reminder is turning to your shadow and knowing that the hand of God is with you, then nothing's going to be able to stop you. And the next time the spirit of rejection or someone comes to despise what you do, you're going to say, mm -mm, the hand of God is my shadow. And this is not of the Lord. And I will not drink from this cup. I won't even embrace it. As a matter of fact, I bless you. That's why the Bible says, bless your enemies, because they need to see God too. Bless them. There is a mighty power about you blessing your enemies. Because remember, it's not flesh and blood we're fighting. It's the principality that's ruling around them. And we need to bless the person that they will see God's glory for themselves in the true, in the trueness of God, in the trueness and not the false of light. OK, because people say, let your light shine. But sometimes people are operating in a place where their light is not even shining your know, projection of heaven. It's shining the projection of their flesh. And so we have to be careful. Remember what I said? The angel came as a light, an angel. I mean, the Satan came as the angel of light and Satan didn't have any great motives. He didn't have any intention to do anything. 
So there's, there's light that's being shined right now that is not shining from God. So we have to make sure we are the true light that is shining and projecting the Jesus character, the Jesus image. This is what Jesus would do. This is how Jesus handled it. I mean, Jesus received so much prosecution. He went through so much tribulation. He had to lay down his life for real. Like he had to go to the cross and bear that pain. We don't have to do that. And we got to give God glory for that. So what we receive here on earth is nothing that he cannot help us through. So look at it as a time of lesson, as a time of character building, as a time of coming into another level with him and, and a time for embracing the natures of God. Like I get, it's, a, it's an opportunity. This I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it so that maybe others can't catch it. It's funny, no one's here. But it's an opportunity for you. It's an open door. Oh, some people are like, well, guess what? If you've made a decision that took you into a place that was not of God's will, I guarantee you, when you realize that you've entered into this place and you'll be like, God, I'm sorry, I did the wrong thing. God will say, don't worry, I got you. I'm going to turn you back around. Okay, but at least you know that God, you, you know, you knew that you had to repent. I did something. I, I went. I went the wrong way. God, help me. And God comes with His hand. Here I am. Here I am. I was just waiting for you to realize that you know you you weren't following me. And that's what that, this is the goodness of God. Like it can't get any better than that. So guys, if the if if there's rejection where people aren't embracing your gift, if there's despising where they don't they don't even like your character for whatever reason that whatever voice they heard whatever voice they're listening to is the voice they're going to be be projecting in you hello i'm going to say that again what i don't know why this earring keeps going whatever voice the people are listening to is the voice that they will be projecting to you this is why it's so important for us to be with the Father so we can project the Father's voice to the people. You will see a lot of people do not go to the Father first. They go to the people. They're not even listening to the Father. They've listened to 20,000 sermons from 20,000 different people. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying... Are those 20,000 different people going to the Father first and then the people? Or are these 20,000 people drinking from different cups? Mm, just asking. I mean, these are things that I, I, I am very particular who I listen to, who do I allow, allow to teach me. And it's not because I'm being judgmental. It's because I know I'm not going back to drinking any, any, any cup that is contaminated. I've, I've, I've done a lot of my own deliverances and I've come a little too far to be free for me to come back into bondage again. So when you are been delivered by something, maintain your deliverance. Say, I don't know. This don't seem right in my spirit. I don't know how, how, you know, I don't see that in scripture. If you, you know, judge it for yourself. It's got to be found in here. The word, the word is our filter. It's literally our two kidneys. So it should filter out, you know, and it should let us know that this is not really where, you know, and I had to make a decision last season. What do I, what do I want to do in my ministry? What do I want to receive? Who do I want to teach me? What, what do I want to get rid of? What, what, what is it I don't want to hear anymore? And so I chose to make a decision where I'm going to hear from voices that are full of character that are laid down lovers from God that are, you know, believe in the same thing that I believe in when it comes to the word. And that's what I'm going to feed off of because it, it, I can't, I can't do it any other way because if I start tapping into other things, I might be drinking from a cup I shouldn't be drinking from. And so we have to keep that in mind. I taught that in our last leadership class, our last leadership Bible uh, study that we had, we talked about Nehemiah being the cup barrier. And if you are like a Nehemiah who is called to build, then you will constantly be, you know, analyzing the cups that are being handed to your people because you want to make sure that they're drinking from the pure well of heaven, not a pure well of man. 
And you're probably like, well, it, God uses men. Yes. But like I said, God first, me, then out. That's the L shape. God first, then me, then out. I cannot preach something I am not living. I always say, if I'm not, if I'm going to preach something I'm not living, then I'm not going to stop preaching because I'm already, I've lost my identity. So uh, you should feel the same. Like I don't want to, I don't want to speak out of something I haven't experienced. So experience God, let it go through you, and then you can deliver to the people. And so I hope this helps people today that maybe have been dealing with rejection. I fired rejection a long time ago, and he always shows back up. I promise you. Your rejection will always knock on your door. Despising, the gossip, all of that comes with the spirit of rejection. They will show up at your door. But i got to make the choice to say, do I embrace it or do I get rid of it? You know, love it. You know, I feel like now, like, rejection has taken its turn to the point where I can love it. Why? Because God's doing something and you're not liking it. You know, sometimes, believe it or not, I mean, and it's not the person, it's the spirit. It's, it's, it's the entity. It's, it's that. It's that thing in them, that root. You know, it, it's just, it just rises when the anointing comes. It just, when the anointing of God comes, things rise. And I'm going to tell you why. When Jesus went into the temple, he didn't say a word. He just had the anointing. Messiah means the anointed one. So when he walked into the temple, the demons knew. They were like, why are you here? It's not even our time. Why are you here? Don't, what, what are you trying to get rid of us already? And he didn't say anything. He didn't even get to give a, a sermon yet. It was just the anointing. So if you find yourself around, coming around certain particular areas and people manifest, I want you to identify that you have an anointing to pull up roots. So all you need to do is just embrace it, speak love to it, and um, and carry on because we don't have time to be offended. So I hope this helps you, and I bless your day. And remember, I will write down here. I don't know if Facebook allows me to attach a file, but I'm going to put the decree in there, and I will. I would really challenge you to decree this over your life for the next 30 days. If you struggle with the um, with rejection, I was going to say something else, but I don't think it's time for that right now. Um, if you struggle for rejection, and I'm gonna, I want you to speak this over yourself, and I, and then, and then, if you take this challenge for the next thirty days, I want a testimony. I want a testimony sent to my inbox on what happened. I'm, I'm just going to challenge people. Let's see what happens. I mean, if you're serious about your business, you're serious about the business of God, then challenge yourself. God loves it when we like say, you know what? When we don't say, God, I'm going to do this for you. No, when we say, God, I'm going to do this for myself and, I, and I'm going to make you proud. He loves that. I mean, what parent doesn't love that? You know, I'm going to do this for myself and I'm going to make you proud. And, and God's like, go, 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 love it. Go, 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 go. And then he'll like, you know, and it, oh, I just get all caught up. You know, the, the Bible says that there's a cloud of witness cheering us on in the heavens. And they could just be like, go, 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 look at her go, look at her go. Yes, she's overcoming. She's an overcomer. She's an achiever. She's a conqueror. Whatever the case may be. And I say she because I'm looking at myself, but it, it, there's no gender in, in the spirit. I'm sorry not to tell you, the Bible says there's no gender in the spirit. So it's not a gender issue. It's a spirit issue. We have to realize that we've got to be led by the spirit. So I'm going to put a declaration in here of a decree. I'm going to challenge you for 30 days. We'll do it together. And I will give my testimony. And I want to see you guys give up your testimony. And, and I think I got a good idea. How about this? I am going to create a group of decrees. And I'm going to tag you in. If you want to get involved, that's great. Um, send me an inbox and I'll tag you in. And we will, for 30 days, as a group, decree, one decree for 30 days. And then I want to see what God does. 
how about this? How about we test and see the Lord? How Malachi says, test, test the Lord and see if I don't open up the store houses of heaven over you. Let's do this. I'm feeling challenged. I'm re- I like I like challenges, so I'm challenged. Let's do it. Send me an inbox. I will include you in this group, and we will decree a thing for the next 30 days. And we're going to see what the Lord is doing. I'm, I'm saying I've seen people. I've seen people do it. I've seen prayer, a breakthrough come through, and and I'm believing it. So, thanks for logging in, guys. I will see you next time. And I will create the group. And we are going to decree a thing for the next 30 days. And I want to see a testimony because I'm trusting God to do it. So I will see you in my next session. I can never put say to you when because I'm led by the spirit of God. And people are like, well, as long as I'm doing it like I'm supposed to, right? <laughs> It's like I'm doing what I'm supposed to, you know, like when God says it. Uh, love you too, mom. All right, message it to me, please. Okay, so I will send it to you, Lisa. You'll get it. Uh, yes, okay, awesome. So I have a few here. I'm going to send it over to you guys. These they, uh, Guys, I don't know if you know, but Facebook comments are delayed so i don't get them like in time like i i get them after a while and and then it shows up it doesn't show up like when we post it so even probably when i get off of this there'll be more comments coming in and i I wouldn't even know until later on but um just know that i'll read them all right love you guys we'll see you guys again bye